Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagoras, and today I have a Death's Shadow Deathwish Monsters deck for you guys. This is a pretty nice deck, we're going to be playing it on the Pro Ladder, and this is using the Death's Shadow ability. We can use this once per round in order to trigger an allied unit's Deathwish ability, and that is gold or bronze unit. So this ability can be used once per round, and there are some pretty nice Deathwish abilities, so it's, you know, it makes sense to use this as your leader. We then have our good friend Keltulis. She is a dragon, and if you play her on the melee row, every allied turn on turn end, she will destroy the lowest unit on the side with the most units. She can hurt you, however, if your opponent has more units than you, she's basically utilized to kill units on their side. And this triggers at the end of your turn. So the turn that you play her, if there's more units on your opponent's side, then one of them will instantly die. And because there's quite a lot of swarmy decks at the moment in the meta, Keltulis is a really nice addition. You can actually control your side of the board a little bit also by consuming. So if you feel like you're getting too many units, you can eat some and that's pretty good. We then have Geralt Erden. Geralt Erden resets all units on a row and that this can just win you games. This is a nice tech card and it fits quite well into this deck. Some people, you know, don't like Erden and if you don't like Erden, you can go for like the cave troll, say as a defender, for example, but I quite enjoy the list with Erden. Um, and I think it's Mayamon on Pro Ladder has been playing the Erdin version, so I feel like it's it's Pro Ladder approved. You know, it's not, just don't don't just take my word for it. We got Royal Decree. We can use that to find some of our gold cards. Some people like to run Nagofar, but I'm kind of more partial to Royal Decree because it allows you to get specific cards. Nagofar makes draws for future rounds better, but there's a little bit of RNG in terms of what you find, and sometimes that can hurt you. We have Ighern, uh, which gains armor equal to the number of cards in your hand. If this unit has no armor, destroy self. But typically we'll play this and then we'll consume it so that the value is on the consumed mer, the unit that ate the Ighern, rather than on the Ighern where if the armor is removed, it's going to die. We then have Detlaf Hire Vampire, Deathwish. Summon this unit from the graveyard to the same row. This unit's ability is limited to two uses and does not refresh. So effectively, the way Detlaf works, you play it on the board as a five strength unit. You eat it gain five points and then it comes back so you then get the five points return and you can do this twice and it synergizes really nicely with Kran, which has zeal which means when you play it you can do what it does and it can consume an allied unit and it has three charges so what you can do is play detlaf then play Kran, eat detlaf eat detlaf again and then you've gotten a bunch of points plus one more consume which you could use on something like say an acorn for example we then have Maruna. This is a death wish ability, so we can use this with our leader. Seize an enemy unit with four or less power. And if we eat the Maruna, that will trigger its death wish and also will save the points. So this is quite nice for denying enemy engines, but be aware that obviously they have to have four or less power. Then we have Osril. Osril, we can use to eat a unit from our opponent's graveyard or from our own graveyard. And we've got some big boys in the deck. For example, we have the Ikern, which you can then put in your graveyard with a consume. Then you can eat it with Osril. And then that's like a nice 14 point play. We also have another big boy, Goliath. And, and Goliath's death wish is that when it dies, your opponent pulls the highest unit from their deck onto the opposite row. So onto their, onto their board. And, and you might think, but Jag, why would you want to play a death wish that benefits your opponent? But say you're playing round two and they dry pass, you can always play Goliath, then trigger their leader ability to thin a strong card out of their deck. Um, and provided it's not worth more than 10, that's a good play, which usually it isn't if you know your matchups. Uh, on top of that, like you can use this to get units on the their board for Keltulis, so to try and manipulate the board state. Goliath's kind of nice in that inclusion. And also it's a 10 point body in the graveyard for Osril to eat. We have Karanthir, and he's really good for getting an extra death wish. So for example, an extra Maruna or an extra manticore. So we, we play Karanthir and we spawn a one power copy of a unit from our hand, which means we could play Karanthir onto say Maruna, play a one strength Maruna, use our leader to trigger her ability and still have Maruna in hand for a future round. Similarly manticore, he has a death wish where he destroys the lowest enemy. So we could play Karanthir, get the one point manticore and then eat that. And it allows you to basically see more value out of the death wish cards than you would typically get. Then we have Barbagazi. This is a uh, consume, but not with zeal. So we play Barbagazi, then on the next turn we start consuming things to trigger death wishes. Similarly, Slizzard. Slizzard consumes an allied unit on the row, so remember to play units on the same row. Barbagazi just has two consumes and is slightly harder to remove because it's six base strength. We have a couple of Harpy eggs. Death wish, spawn a Harpy and summon it to this row. Harpy has a five strength body. So again, that's something that we can consume and trigger. If we don't have gold death wish units, we can always use our leader on these and it's still an okay play. We've got a couple Endrega Lava, which are basically like Neckers, but with armor. They have Thrive, so when you play a unit taller than them, they gain strength. Uh, taller being worth more points, basically. Um, and 
when you play one of these, a second one spawns next to it. So it's one strength, it's got two armor. It's a little bit tricky to remove and it can lead to a lot of value. We got a couple of Andrega warriors. These are also consumers. They consume their adjacent. So what's on the left of them, what's on the right of them. So think about your positioning when you're playing this deck. Um, and then they spawn a drone if they consumed an insectoid. So, you know, you can consume, say, the Andrega eggs, which are an insectoid, and you would gain an extra point from that. This, when it dies, it spawns three drones to the row, so you get some little one-point drones. Doesn't really play well with uh, Keltulis, so don't be playing this and Keltulis on the same turn. We've got Foglet. When this dies, it summons a copy of the unit from your deck to a random ally row, so we want to play one of these, eat one, and thin it out of the deck, which is quite nice. And last but not least, we have Bruxa, which is a three-point thrive, so like the Andrega Larva. And when you play this, you can give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns. This is more of a four-point filler card, but it allows you to then have space to play Erden, so not a bad inclusion either. Right, that is the deck. So, without further ado, I'm going to jump into a ranked game and showcase this deck for you. This deck does come from a player called Alessio, who is a member of Team Leviathan Gaming. I'll have links to their website in the description below. And if you do like the deck, hit that like button, and uh, I'll see you guys shortly. Ah, there is no other way. Oh, we got a death mish. Death Mish? Death Wish Mirror, which makes Maruna very interesting because we can steal his Death Wish cards, which is quite nice. But we don't have Caranthia, so I don't think we necessarily want to spend uh, Maruna in round one. In terms of our hand, we want to look for how many consumers we have. We only have one. Well, actually, we have two. But then we have two Indrega eggs, which is too much, I think. So I'm going to mulligan one of these. We've got a Foglet, which is nice. We've got a Harpy Egg, which is nice. We've got Royal Decree, which actually is going to give us Caranthia, which means we can really push round one. So I'm going to mulligan the other Indrega Egg, I think and the larva and hope we don't get a foglet it's a little bit risky but i wanted to find some more consumes um which we managed to do so that's quite good i don't really have to be too worried about resets unless he's running urden but chances are he doesn't necessarily have the urden and this deck doesn't really have too much removal so what i think we're just going to do for now is we're going to play this lizard and then the way that we're going to shut him down on this round is we're going to use maruna in order to kidnap his death wish units okay playing this lizard is nice because it means that he can't Maruna it, but he can he can Manticore it if he plays Manticore, you know, that's going to be quite expensive. But if he plays Manticore, then we get Manticore out of him, you know? Okay, so there's a Harpy Egg, uh, which, he has, which he has triggered, and we can actually just take that from him. And I think that's probably the best way to play out this round. So what I'm going to do, because I, I do want to win this round, and I do know the matchup fairly well. Usually, by the way, you would open with Andrega Larva, but I think because of the matchup, I want to do this. We're going to play this. We're going to play Karanthir. We're going to play Karanthia here. We're going to play Maruna. One strength Maruna. We're going to trigger Maruna's death wish and take his egg. And then we're not going to eat Maruna, but we are going to tactical advantage Maruna. Because by boosting it, it means that he can't Maruna my Maruna. Like he can't take my Maruna from me, which is also pretty nice. Uh, I don't think I really care if he thins his Foglets. Uh, he hasn't played a consume yet. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to play my Foglet. We're gonna eat it, get some units on the board, and yeah, this looks looks pretty good. You know, he did get he did get one death wish, but as it is, like I said, we can we can try and take his cards. I'm gonna play the next uh, the harpy egg here next to the other harpy egg. Um, we do have the Andrega warrior to trigger it, so I'm kind of all right with just leaving this for now and seeing kind of what happens on the board. The other thing we can do is we could play Acorn and consume it, but that kind of enables his Osral. And we don't really want to give him an Osral, so probably not the wisest play. With that said, you know, this list doesn't have a lot of damage, so you could just play Acorn, and it's probably going to be fine. Um, so we don't want to steal any of these. The problem is now he can just kind of eat as and how he wants, which is a little bit, you know, annoying. But I think it's fine, so let's do this. Eat both of those. Trigger some bodies on the on the board, and yeah, I think we can end our turn here. You know, we're we're comfortably ahead of him. I mean, he is only playing bronze cards. The only thing is, like I said, we could have played the Indrega earlier, but I liked having the denial for his egg with the Maruna. We have Maruna for next turn. We haven't really spent too much. We've thinned our foglets. It's it's pretty good, right? And let's see how we draw here in terms of deciding how it is we want to play against our opponent. Um, so we got a Slizzard, we got mm, too much bronze, I think. Let's mulligan the Andrega Lava. We've got Maruna, which is nice. Keltulis could be very good. Uh, Andrega Warrior, I don't think we need because we have Barbagazi. Andrega Eggs, mm, not what we want to see here, not what we want to see at all. 
So we could open Slizzard. I'm just a little bit worried about his Manticore. Because if he has Manticore, that's bad. So maybe we just open and drag a Lava for now. Put them down. And then what that does is it stops him from playing uh, playing too much. Okay, so he played Keltulus, which is fine. We could just pass here. You know, all we've spent is in Drega Larva, and I think that's okay. If he plays Goliath and triggers its ability, he will pull one of my fives, which is quite bad. Um, I mean, we can we can kind of manipulate the the board state a little bit. The thing is, if he just boosts if he just boosts the Keltulus, then things are gonna die. If we play our own Keltulus, I don't, I don't think it's correct. I think maybe we just pass here. I don't really hate the pass. If we had Manticore, we would play Manticore and trigger the Death Wish and kill Keltulus. But because we don't have that option, I'm just going to take a pass, I think. Because the thing is, on the next round, he's going to be going first, which makes Keltulus kind of a problem for him. So I think this is actually okay. There's Manticore. It's nice. So I'm going to keep a Consume and a Consume because we don't have K-Ren. Although we have this Consume, actually. Let's get rid of the eggs. Detlaf. Let's get rid of the warrior. Harpy egg. Okay, Detlaf's kind of awkward. We can consume it with Slizzard, though. No Urden. Urden would have been really nice in this matchup because it's a really strong counter. But, you know, if we don't draw it, we don't draw it. So I think what we probably do is open with Barbagazi. Because that then allows us to... Oh, sorry, with Slizzard, because that then allows us to consume things. The thing is, if he has Manticore, I'm a little bit worried about that. So maybe instead what we could do is we can just play our own Indregas. And see what he does. Because playing the Indregas is nice because it blocks things like Maruna. Which I think is, is pretty good. And then we can play the uh, the Slizzard. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're not getting as much value as we would like from the Larva. But I think if we play the Slizzard, it allows us to eat units. And then we can basically bully him with Keltulis, which is quite nice. Okay, so let's do that play our Keltulus. And we don't need to eat anything at the moment just because the current board state means that he has more units than us. So we killed an Indrega, which is not too bad. And now it's like a problem for him because he needs to start eating things, right? Because he wants to try and play around my Keltulus, which is going to be difficult for him. I'd imagine this is Royal Decree. There's Karanthir, Manticore, trigger that, kill one of the threes. But by doing that, I guess he's playing into my strategy. I think what we could do arguably here is play Maruna and try and steal the Manticore. Chances are, I mean, there's one in five, right? So it's not the greatest odds ever, but I don't think it's the worst. I shall save your death. Come on, Manticore. We got an Endrega. But now we're on five units, which is kind of bad. If we eat this, we're both on four, though. And we got the Manticore. And now that's going to kill the Manticore and kill one of his units. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Keltulus coming in hot. And again, we can just keep eating things. Um, and so because we're eating things, it's kind of, you know, messing up his strategy a little bit. So what we could do is we could play the Goliath and then eat the Goliath. And that's going to put more units on his side of the board, which is quite good. So let's do that. There we go. Icarn then dies. And the reason it died is because the way that Icarn works is... It has this deployability. And because we summoned it, the deployability didn't trigger. So the, the problem is now it's in the graveyard. So if we had Osril, that would actually be quite good for us. But it does mean he can play Osril here, yeah, and eat it. And worst case scenario, we can always just eat the Keltulus. You know, that's not the worst thing to do in the world. The tricky thing is we, we actually have one, two, let me see, one, two, three, four, five units. If we play Manticore and eat it, then his Harpy Egg dies and he has five units. And then we kill one. So we kill one of his fives. I think that's fine. Oh, and we hit the one that spawns another? Yeah, so that's good. So the... Yeah, because we knew we were going to hit the egg. Yeah, so then we spawn another one and then we kill one of his units. And then, like I said, worst case scenario, we can just eat the Keltulus. The only fear that we really have in that line of play is that our opponent is going to... Um... Erden us, because like I said, Erden is a thing. Okay, he doesn't have Erden. If he has Defender, he doesn't have Erden. So I think we're okay to just keep eating things. So let's get a, a second consumer on the board. I think having a second consumer is basically going to allow us to manipulate the board state pretty well. So let's do that. We have five units. He has four units. We'll eat the Indrega. 
We have four units. He has four units. But we have two eats per turn. Which is quite good. And like I said, worst case scenario, we'll just eat Keltulus. So come on, hit this. Oh, wrong six. Wrong six. So I think what we probably do here is just eat Keltulus. There we go. Stop that from triggering. Play that. Actually, I should have probably played the Dead Laugh. It means that we're only going to get one eat out of the Dead Laugh, which is kind of bad. But like he doesn't have any consumes either. So let's play Igkern. And then eat the Igkern. And it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit scary. Just because of the state of the board. But I think we're probably okay here. Yeah, he only has... Uh, he only has 64 points, so we got him. We got him, boys and girls. Good job. Good job. That Manticore play was sweet. A little bit, a little bit RNG and Gwent, but you know. I am the Death Wish Master. We didn't even have Erden. If we had Erden last play, we would also reset all of that. Whereas if he had Erden, our Slizzard would have been a little bit scuffered. We took a risk, though, with the Keltulus, but we had the Slizzard, which stuck, which allows you to manipulate the board, and we can always eat the Keltulus. So, you know, just be a little bit aware of how you're playing your Keltulus, and sometimes it is better to play her on the range row. Anyway, that was a really good game. Let's jump into another game now and I'll showcase this deck once more for you guys. Ah, there is no other way. All right, so we're against an enslave with five power or less. This is a little bit tricky because he can obviously, he can abduct our cards, which we don't really like. We don't have great options for consuming here. Because ideally what we want is a Barbagazzi, because he can't really remove that. And as it currently stands, the only thing we have is an Andrega. I'm going to throw the Harpy Egg. Oh, I definitely don't want two Boglets. And we just got a Harpy Egg back. Okay, so I think the play then um, is we start with the drones, the larva. We end our turn. And then we'll kind of see from there. Erden, not the greatest in this matchup. Okay, so he's got assimilate units, which is you know good to know. Um, let's play the foglet. Trigger our boost, then we'll play the harpy egg, then we'll play the intrigue in between, and then we'll kind of decide what we want to do from there. So we'll play one of these. The issue we have is he can swears one of the threes, and don't really want him to do that. Helga, that's expensive. I mean, hmm, nah. I was gonna say we could Maruna, but we don't have a consume on the board and we're not guaranteed to hit this with the Maruna. So let's just do this to thin. Um, and then let's just play our TA and end our turn. So realistically, we're not gonna win the round if he's got Helga on the board and we can't counter her. So I think the most sensible thing to do is, is to take the pass after this. Missive? We've thinned the Foglet, we've played some bronze cards, we haven't really committed, uh, and he's played Helga. So you're not really going to win that round. And we don't have consumes. The hand is pretty stacked, I will say that, but we because we don't have consumes, I feel like I don't feel very comfortable here. You shall hear okay, that's going to deal two damage, and he's got four on his Helga, plus two from the Assembly. Yeah, so he's not ahead of us here. I didn't think he would be, but you know. Better to be safe than sorry. So we're down seven. He'll take the card the round quite easily with one card. Um, but it's probably fine. Probably fine. This matchup is tricky. I think especially because he's not overcommitting to tactics. It means he has less removal. But it... Bribery? That's expensive. That is expensive. And he's just enabled our Osral. So that's nice of him. Okay. Seems good. I wouldn't have played... I mean, unless you don't have like an Assassinate or something. Playing a bri Bribery is very expensive. We do expect to see things like Stefan Skellen and those kind of cards though. If he plays a Defender, we play the Manticore and just trigger it. But then he might just Assassinate the Manticore. So it's, it's better if we have, like I said, a Consumer on the board. But the problem is the Consumers that we have at the moment aren't board-based Consumers. And we don't have Royal Decree, which is also really uncomfortable for us because we want to play one of these you know have these cards so then these are already on the board you play down the maruna or you play down the manticore and life is good for you as it is we don't have that option so life is currently kind of bad for us 
I divined this move from a sparrow's innards. Okay, so let's play an egg. And then end our turn. You might just pass here. Like, it depends if, he, if he's worried about losing card advantage and if he feels like he needs to bleed me. If we had gold yet, we could also do that thing where you thin, you know, like you thin them, which is nice. But we'll see. Yeah, I thought it would pass. This is okay, because it does mean we can just do this and take the round. And again, we haven't really spent anything too expensive. But I do want to find me some consumers. The thing that we're also slightly worried about is him being able to remove my consumers. If we can get like a Barbagazzi, that's really good because he can't just yoink it. The Slizzard is okay. If we can get him to trigger his yoink, then it's not too bad. Double Slizzard. So maybe we just open with the Slizzard. He plays his Abduct. And then we can play a second Slizzard. The thing is, if he does have removal, like five points of removal, that's bad. We don't have Andrega, and that's also bad. We could play this, but he'll probably yoink it. Unless we play Karanthia and play a one strength one. Right, we play Karanthia, we get a one strength debt laugh, which he doesn't really want to yoink. I don't hate it. We could play Osril. How much toll removal does he have? Sometimes they have a reset or an invocation. But he has last play anyway, right? Let's just do this. Like, they've got resets, you know? They've got- he's got options for that, and he has last play. So it doesn't matter if I play this now or later. Oh my god, what is going on with the lighting in here? That is weird. Let's, uh, let's try and- let's try and tone that down. I guess the sun came out. Ooh, there we go! Nailed it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how long that's been like that. Artorias. Okay, so now we can play Kill Two Lists. We'll see what he chooses to do. I mean, if he has like a Tourney Jouster and Assassinate, which is likely, he can then abduct the Keltulus. But he still has more units on his side of the row, so he probably doesn't want to do that. And then if he's killing my units, then Keltulus is really going to be harming him. So this is quite an interesting play, I would say. Should be good. Should be good. He's thinking. Play some cards. So, so far all he's played is Atorius. He's created a one strength Imperial Brigade and thinned the Imperial Brigades out of his deck. But the fact he hasn't done it until now also means that his draws probably weren't so good because you haven't played your thinning. He doesn't have a counter for Keltulus is his problem. I think that's what this means. Menno. Diplomacy. That's not what you want to do, Cave Troll. Oh, he's roping! If you have puny units, then your opponent boosts off by one. That's not going to help you. Um. So I think maybe we just play the Slizzard here. Obviously, he can he can yoink it. Um, but if he does that again, he's still playing into my strategy, which is kind of bad for him. And if he does that, we just play another Slizzard. So it, this is looking quite good right this very moment. This is this is not looking too bad. So we'll see what happens. I'm feeling quite good. Yep. So there's the there's the end slave which we expected. You got to play a card now. And there's Damien, which means he can actually take the the next lizard as well, which is kind of bad. So if that's the case, what we do now is we play um, Karanthir. And we play a one point debt laugh. And we end our turn. Because we don't want to play anything that he wants to take from us. The, the other problem with him having the Slizzard is he can play around the Keltulus, which is a little bit bad. So there's Swears. I guess you play that on Karanthir. Oh no, that makes sense on the one strength uh, friendo. But if we play Maruna on the back row, he can't seize it which is good. Well, he can seize it, but he can't eat it, I guess is what I mean. Although actually, I think I would rather he took 
the manticore. So we probably play manticore on the back row here. Although if he kills the manticore, it triggers his debt laugh, which is bad for us. Unless we play Kran and eat something. But if we play Kran and eat at three, it goes to eight, which means he can damage it and then steal it, which is also bad. If we play Ighern, he can damage it. So I think maybe what we do is we just play this lizard on the front row. And then if he does start consuming things to play around Keltulis, it's kind of fine for us. Actually, I should have played Manticore because I didn't realize Keltulis is going to trigger his death laugh. It's kind of fine for us because... Um, then we can just roll to create Urdan instead. Right? We'll see. We'll see. It's it's. Uh, I don't know. This is this is a tricky one. And then if he doesn't do anything about the slizzard, we can then get a consume off, which is also bad for him. Yeah. So he has to play the enslave here. And we can always K around the Kiltulis. So that's fine. Like if it gets to the point where it's an issue, we can definitely do that. Nufgots, iron might. So what do you boost here? You have to boost your defender because otherwise it's gonna die. Across the Empire will sing this day. Oof, he is roping. So let's just play Debt Laugh for now. And then end our turn. Keltulis is getting so much value. Then we can play Manticore, then we can play Varuna. Interesting. I'm not really bothered about that. I guess he's deciding if he wants to start eating his units to try and protect, like, so that he doesn't get got, I guess. He can get down to six units, but even then I'm still going to be pinging his things. And there's a, there's a chance that I hit the debt lap, I guess. Okay, he ate the other consumer. Interesting. Okay, so let's just play this. And again, we're playing it in between these units because by playing it in between them, it plays around Tourney Joust. Kill another one of his units. Because if he keeps eating things on that row, he's also giving us value, which he doesn't really want to do. The issue we do have with Ikern is he's probably going to kill it. I don't know. It depends if Erdan is more value than Kran. It might be that Kran is better as the last play. Experimental remedy. So I guess you play that next to the... If you're smart, you play it there. Yeah, to eat that. You still have more units than me, though. So that's good. So if we play Maruna, one, two, three, four, five, six. We would have six and he would have six if we trigger it. Which I guess is kind of bad. Let's do that. And then end our turn. And it might be that Icarin is just dead. He's got six units, we've got five units. Seems okay. His smallest unit at the moment is a five. If he plays Stefan, that's also a five. So then we probably would just leader the manticore right okay Triss zap so we, we take your Triss thanks we have five units you have six units So the problem we have is if he leaders the Manticore, then we don't have anything to eat, but I think it's fine. The other problem we have is we play Ikarin, he's going to kill it, right? Realistically, that's what's going to happen. So maybe we just discard the Ikarin. If we discard the Ikarin, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then he loses a five. So actually, I think this is the correct play, weirdly enough. Because if he's going to kill the Ikarin anyway, but then I guess he plays his removal now on something on the board. So, I suppose what we do is we Kran, we eat 
he's played Invocation already, hasn't he? But he hasn't played he hasn't played Peter. And if we're worried about Peter, what we would do is we'd kill around, we'd eat the mant we'd trigger the manticore, we'd eat the manticore, and we'd eat Keltulus, right? This is an interesting matchup, you guys. See, now the sun's gone down a bit, it's gotten darker in here. I should just shut my curtains, but like, then it's a bit, like, I don't know, dark in here. Stars content, you shall be <laughs> so he's trying to play around it, that's cute, that's cute. So we're gonna hit a five and a seven. So, Royal Decree. Okay, around. Leader, Manticore. Eat, Manticore. How many units does he have? Three. Eat. Kill two this. If he has a reset, we just lose. Right? Let me pass. We are up ten points. What's his last card? He had an ass There we go! Look at that! Look at that! That was a really fun game. Oof. We played- I think I played that pretty well. I think I played that pretty well. I- I, like, I don't want to blow my own horn, but... Seems good. Seems good. Okay! Well, that was- that was nice. Um, I think, like, the Keltulus was really big, and the fact that he couldn't really play around that was quite tricky for him. So, GG well played, GG well played. Uh, so yeah, that is the death wish list. If you enjoy it, then feel free to hit that like button. If you don't enjoy it, you could still hit that like button. Let me know how you get on if you do end up playing it. I think it's a fun monsters list. I think monsters is quite diverse at the moment, so you can probably expect some more monsters videos going forward. Um, but let, yeah, let me know what you think of the, the list in the comments below. Are there any changes that you would make? Uh, what is your favorite monsters deck, I guess? I love having a chat with you guys, so feel free. Uh, beyond that, have an awesome, awesome day, wherever you are. You can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagoras. You can find me on Twitter, at Jagoras. And if you want to find out more about Team Leviathan Gaming, you go to teamleviathangaming.com. I am a streamer for them, so if you ever want to catch me streaming uh, on Twitch, that is something that I do. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Try and be good. If you can't be good, don't be bad. I've been Jagoras. This has been Gwent, the Witcher card game. Bye!